Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Rocky Mountain West Regions webinar. My name is Scott Gibson, and I'm chair of the Regional Pavement Preservation Partnership. I'm an engineer with the Regional Transportation Commission in Washoe County, Nevada. That's in the Reno, Sparks, Lake Tahoe area, northern Nevada. Our partnership consists of uh, 13 states in the region, as well as local agencies, consultants, academics, and industry supporters. The topics for today's webinar are taken from the agenda that the board put together for our regional face-to-face -face meeting that's turned into this uh, virtual meeting. Today's agenda is the use of rat treatments in, that's being presented by Greg Duncan, who's a senior engineer with Applied Pavement Technology based in Spokane, Washington. Prior to beginning at Applied Pavement Technology, Greg was at Tennessee DOT in operations and maintenance. With that, I'll switch it over to Greg Duncan. Well, thank you, Scott. I appreciate it very much. To say uh, thank you to Scott and the organizers of the conference today for the opportunity to speak and talk to you about uh, using RAP and surface treatments. This is a long-term project that I've been working on, and, and there's been a lot of assistance that's come in from the industry as we as we talk about the project i'll try to acknowledge those that contributed but i just want to say thank you up front for everyone that helped uh, i'd also like to say that uh, giving this presentation virtually isn't necessarily my preferred venue i sure would have liked to have been in uh, New Mexico this year, looking at you all face to face. And I'd also like to say uh, welcome to Lisa Vega. I know she's a uh, staff engineer there with the New Mexico DOT, and she contributed substantially to this project. So I, I appreciate her assistance and uh, welcome her to the program today. The project objectives basically were to document all the case studies or develop any kind of uh, best practices or summarize those that existed, the testing cost specifications in the use of recycled asphalt pavement or reclaimed asphalt pavement in the surface pavement preservation treatment arena. So we were specifically looking at chip seals, microsurfacing, and slurry seals, and we were particularly not looking at hot mix asphalt or thin lift asphalt materials as those were covered in, in lots of other research projects ongoing. Uh, the project was developed and put forward by Federal Highway Administration out of the Turner Fairbank area. Morgan Kessler is our project sponsor, project monitor, so thanks to Morgan for uh, giving us the opportunity to do this work. The tasks, as any good research project, is organized. Uh, we had a kickoff meeting. We were charged with developing current practices of using reclaimed asphalt pavement and preservation treatments. We developed a work plan after, after knowing what was out there to approach the remaining tasks of the project. Uh, we conducted the work. Uh, we conducted a webinar that was conducted in October of last year. It's available on YouTube. We'll have a link to that at the conclusion of our uh, presentation here, if you're interested in getting more information about that work. We developed a tech brief uh, within the FHWA format that should be published in the coming uh, weeks or months. And we are in the process of delivering all final project documentation. So walking through the FHWA publication process currently, to complete the project. So those of you that are looking for a document uh, or a uh, summary of the research project uh, should be available in the coming weeks, working uh, actively on that. So what do we know about RAP, reclaimed asphalt pavement? We know from the literature that it's a valuable byproduct, that it has an inherent value. It is typically derived from a high quality source. Most agencies that specify asphalt pavements uh, have rigorous quality requirements that apply to the source aggregates that are used, also the asphalt cement that's, that's mixed in there. Uh, and so we know that aside from having that inherent value, we know that the materials are relatively high quality. How does wrap behavior 
How does it affect the idea of surface treatments? Some folks uh, ascribe to the black rock theory that this is just a, an aggregate that is coated with asphalt or has some coating of asphalt. And if you're in tune with the hot mix asphalt discussion, you know that the amount of reclaimed asphalt pavement that you can use in, in hot mix asphalt is somewhat limited because of the interactive nature of that binder on the rock and its aged condition uh, affecting the virgin binder that is, that is blended back in. We also know that wrap has come a long way in terms of its processed nature. It is uh, typically on most owner's yards. It's crushed and fractionated to some extent to make it more useful and to increase its value. High frequency screens have improved this uh, capability and define in a, in a new way the ways that wrap can be incorporated not only at a hot mix plant, but cold central plant recycling uh, in addition to the processes that we'll be talking about today, the chip seals, slurry seals, and microsurfacing. So those are the those are the background uh, components that we need to consider. When we looked at where current practices were occurring, we found a really limited scope of what documentation was available to help us understand at the beginning of the project what was, what was being done. Uh, we did find a, a project in, the, in New Mexico that was sponsored by the New Mexico DOT to determine how to best use their uh, wrap stockpiles that were available on state right-of-way and uh, the University of New Mexico was conducting that study and it was uh, nearly completed if not already published. We were able to get some early writings on, on that material to explain what they were looking at. Uh, the hotbed of information that was available was really in Southern California. We'll talk about some of the some of the areas that were using these practices. Thanks are, are well deserved to a lot of folks who spoke into our process of trying to uncover uh, where the, the uh, reclaimed asphalt pavement was being used. Uh, we conducted interviews with Scott Metcalf from Ergon, Buzz Powell with the National Center for Asphalt Technology, Doug Ford and Don Matthews who operate uh, sister companies there in Southern California pavement coatings and pavement recycling systems. Van Truong, uh, an official with Los Angeles County Public Works. Uh, Angel Lemus from San Bernardino County. Mike Hemsley from Paragon Technical Services. And Virgil Valdez, as I mentioned, provided uh, a vast array of information uh, concerning the, the, the topic and what we were really looking to get out of it. After conducting those interviews, we wondered why use RAP in pavement preservation treatments, specifically these surface treatments. And folks said, these are cost effective. We have uh, increased competition for supply of materials. We've, uh, we're using, we're reusing materials so it's available at a lower cost. Uh, LA County in particular said, we, this is an environmentally sustainable practice that we are investing in and and we believe that's important and we aim to continue to do that. San Bernardino County, for instance, said these materials are alternatives to scarce aggregate resources and not only do we want to be mindful of uh, what sources we're using, but also um, we want to increase competition for those products to be supplied on our projects. Uh, we also ask about what are the differences in using wrap, uh, and very quickly, folks pointed to uh, in chip seals, things are very similar. Uh, the wrap coating uh, or the asphalt coating on the wrap particles acts like a uh, pre-coating as compared to a virgin aggregate. We believe we get a better aggregate bond. Uh, and we also have a blacker surface texture or a darker surface texture for a longer period of time, which enhances some of the, the safety components of the pavement, giving us better contrast for pavement markings. When we looked at uh, microsurface and slow, uh, slurry seal characteristics, folks identified that 
this is where we get, we think, a little bit of interactivity between the wrap asphalt and the uh, virgin emulsion that we're placing in the in the systems. Uh, we sometimes uh, often see a one to two percent reduction in required virgin asphalt emulsion, and we also see a slower set in the chemical package than what we we normally see in uh, virgin aggregate. And so we developed a work plan and we wanted to see some of these treatments in practice. We were able to uh, visit the National Center for Asphalt Technology. You may recognize here the, the test track down there in Opelika, Alabama. What they did was apply a hot rubber modified chip seal. They compared pre-coated virgin aggregate chips with uh, similarly sized wrap chips. These were about half inch maximum aggregate size. Uh, they loaded that on the test track for two years and monitored all sorts of information. They, they uh, concluded that the systems were very similar in practice during this two years, which is not it's not the typical lifespan of a surface treatment, but it did provide good information that these could be constructed and perform very similarly. They also identified uh, reduced skid values for the wrap materials. And I couldn't track this down specifically, but I suspect that those materials, because they're of a size uh, equal to or, or larger than their typical surface gradations that these were non-surface approved uh, materials that might have uh, polished under under traffic. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in another case study, but these were the findings from NCAP that it could be done and it performed very similarly. Uh, we also went to Paragon Technical Services and met with Mike Hemsley and some of his staff down there in Mississippi. Their company provides mixed designs for their clients. So people that are looking for chip seal, slurry, and microsurface components, uh, they design emulsion packages to meet the requirements for those mixed designs. And they had really good information showing uh, that this material performed on the wet track abrasion test, the loaded wheel tester for the microsurfacing, and they had examples that showed we can develop lower asphalt content blends. So here's a, here's a table of data. So this, this table shows four different wrap sources. Uh, the far right column is a wrap blend with virgin aggregate. So their research was really looking at what are the, what are the characteristics that need to be considered as, as we design these packages. The microsurface was able to meet all of the required characteristics. The uh, wet track abrasion test on both the one hour soak and the six day soak, the loaded wheel test. Notice these optimum emulsion contents. So these values of 11 and a half to 12, 12 and a half, those would typically be at least 13 and a half, 14 kinds of numbers. And so you can see that uh, for these different blends, the recommendation for those uh, components is quite a bit lower than virgin aggregate. And so that translates directly into, into dollars, uh, not having to provide as many tons of asphalt emulsion on a project as what might be required otherwise. They also tabulated uh, how much asphalt is coming into the blend as as a component of the wrap. And so you can see that that is a significant number and the ultimate total asphalt content there on the in the bottom row, uh, you can see is also uh, quite a bit higher than the 13 and a half to 14 values that might occur on a uh, totally uh, virgin aggregate source. Very good information to help folks that are considering design of those systems and uh, what the economics of that might look like. We turn now to San Bernardino County, which is in Southern California. They watched 
Los Angeles County adopting the use of wrap materials and decided they wanted to try it as well. And so largely their uh, pavement preservation program is a an in-house chip seal delivery program, and they have aggregate delivered to their job sites. Being able to uh, accept wrap as an approved aggregate source provides another avenue for them and increases their bid competition. Uh, looking at some of their bids, uh, they're seeing up to 30% cost savings in delivered wrap as compared to what uh, virgin aggregate bids are associated there. So uh, significant savings just by increasing the competition for material production and, and supply. They noted that since they're applying the materials themselves, they, they still apply the same basic rate of asphalt emulsion on the pavement. They're still dropping about the same uh, aggregate loading rate to uh, complete their chip seal. Uh, I believe they're using the 5 uh, top size aggregate product that's available. So those are the, uh, you can see the uh, Route 66 display there in the back. That's a, uh, that's a completed wrap chip seal project from a few years ago. So you can see the texture of that product there. They also noted that the lost aggregate or what might be wasted was less than their typical uh, virgin application rate. They did note a difference in applying a double chip seal. Uh, they had, uh, now again, they're applying these uh, products themselves, but they did have some difference when they applied a, a first shot of binder uh, drop wrap chips and then applied another shot of binder with another layer of wrap chips. They did note some bleeding in those sections, have some concern about whether two applications of wrap chips is a, a viable option. Uh, the next case study is Los Angeles County, and they were very open with their information for our study, greatly contributed to, to what we were looking at. I'll try to walk you through the, the information they provided, uh, relay the, the study that they did in the components. Uh, you can see there that Los Angeles County is a, encompasses several municipalities down in Southern California. So they have uh, very diverse roadways that they're applying their pavement preservation models to. When we ask Los Angeles County why they were interested in using RAP, they really pointed us to the whole public relations campaign that they were diving into. They, they produce a brochure on sustainable roads. This information really provides a, a look at not just the sustainable materials that they're using, but also the sustainability nature of doing pavement preservation to uh, use their funding in the most efficient manner. And so they, in that sustainability model, they actually share pavement condition index averages for their, their network across Los Angeles County. They talk about the tools in their toolbox, the recycled tire rubber that they use. They, they talk about the reclaimed asphalt pavement that they use. Uh, and so it's really a three-pronged approach to adapting their uh, reuse uh, reduce, reuse, and uh, repurpose their strategies to improve sustainability in that market. They're really focused on providing that information to the public. When we ask, how do you know how it works? Uh, they pointed us to data. They have a, a very um, thorough payment management system. They were able to point us to neighborhoods where this section of roadways were treated in 2010, I believe, uh, with virgin aggregate treatments. And they compared those to treatments conducted uh, two years later that were almost uh, entirely done with wrap aggregate treatments. Uh, and so what, they're, what they did is they went in and evaluated the pavement distress uh, before the treatment. And so you can see for the virgin aggregate section, they're looking at 2010 photographs. They noted some map cracking, minor fatigue cracking, some uh, transverse longitudinal cracking as well. 
And then they went back and looked at the condition after treatment in 2016, where basically they had uh, used preservation as a means of improving the condition of the pavement and in prolonging uh, the amount of time that that pavement spent in good condition. They looked at another, they looked at that section uh, where wrap treatments were also used and it had very similar characteristics. Uh, map cracking, fatigue cracking evident prior to treatment placement. And you can see four years later, the documentation they, they reviewed showing that they had very consistent results with the, with the wrap treatments as compared to the virgin aggregate treatments that they had used in the past. As they began to consider how do we implement this, in Los Angeles County, they use a job order contracting method, which basically gives them a catalog of tools in their toolbox to choose from and establish their projects. It's based on the local government specification book, the green book uh, used in Southern California. They permitted contractors to bid this and know that they could replace a virgin aggregate and microsurfacing 100%. Uh, they also went as far as to specify that wrap be used in their slurry seal treatments. And so their typical go-to treatment standard for uh, their neighborhood streets in Los Angeles County is they do a micro mill, they smooth the road up, remove some of that surface distress, then they apply a scrub seal using a 5 16 inch wrap chip, and then they uh, apply about a 20, two 25 pound wrap slurry seal on top of that. That's their favorite tool in their toolbox for uh, preserving their neighborhood streets. Uh, they've done quite a bit of that over the last five years. They see their use of that increasing. They also use some of those design tests like the wet track abrasion test. They use that for quality acceptance testing. So they, they have increased their requirements slightly for source aggregate or source material approval, but they also use uh, in-place materials to accept. And if the uh, material is not in compliance, then there's a pay factor that is applied. The contractors have incentive to, to meet those targets. Uh, looking at the Los Angeles County specifications for slurry seals, we're showing here the, the wrap slurry seal specification in the, in the center column and the virgin type two slurry seal requirements on the, in the right column. And so you can see uh, the asphalt range is uh, considerably different for wrap slurry treatment. Uh, and this would be the, the virgin asphalt that's added. However, the minimum residual asphalt content that's in that final slurry seal material is quite a bit higher specified. So they are counting on getting a considerable amount of asphalt material delivered with that wrap aggregate. Uh, I noted that maximum wear, uh, the aggregate quality requirements were a little bit more stringent for wrap particles. So you can see in the percentage wear, they have a more stringent requirement. In addition to the sand equivalent number, that value is a little bit more stringent. The rest is is very similar. There is a uh, durability requirement applied to, to wrap materials. So they're holding the contractors accountable for delivery of a, of a good material to achieve the performance that they require out of their, out of their slurry seals normally. So that's a, a very consistent process. They use, a, I think they use a, a third party tester to run some of their acceptance tests, joint effort with uh, in-house inspection staff. I think this is the last case study that I wanted to cover. Uh, pavement coatings, pavement preservation applicator there in Southern California, Doug Ford is a is the president. He was uh, very welcoming to have us come and look at what was happening there. Basically, they he and Don Matthews uh, struck up a partnership because the stockpiles of reclaimed asphalt pavement were growing and looking for a, uh, a use. Pavement Coatings tried the application of a chip seal and, and subsequently slurry seals and found that, you know, through their own internal 
laboratory testing that the concept worked. Some of their issues now is that, uh, like San Bernardino County, many uh, entities are really happy using uh, wrap chips, so the coarse aggregate and the the fine material uh, is growing. So they have a they have a desire to balance production so that they are using the fine portion of the fractionated wrap as uh, consistently as they are using the the coarse chip. Uh, they found that they needed slight adjustments in their construction processes, so they have incorporated a rubber tire roller on slurry seal projects and uh, I'm told that helps ensure that the material is uh, seeded and it's uh, it gets a good bond to the to the pavement underneath uh, and they have noted you know we want to ensure similar performance is achieved using these processes because this is we stand behind our product we want that to be successful and we want the product to speak for itself that it's cost-effective and uh, perform similarly or better. So this is one of their processing plants. This is a fractionation plant where the material is uh, crushed and screened. You can see a very small coarse aggregate pile uh, just over the center of that photo there and a very large wrap fines pile on the right side. So uh, they are currently, or, or were when I was visiting, they were using every bit of their coarse aggregate that was being generated, or RAG, as we have abbreviated wrap aggregate. They're using every bit of the that material that is generated, and the amount of wrap fines is growing. So they're looking for uh, increased use in that. Uh, as far as marketing or making the material available to clients. Doug said he has to answer the question, is this aggregate dirty? Is this a pre-coated aggregate basically, or is it a dirty aggregate? And the hypothesis is that this is a, a very similar to a freshly pre-coated aggregate. It, it has very little dust content. The issues with uh, dusty coarse aggregate aren't, aren't really apparent. It does act a little bit differently. Looking at conclusions to the project, depending on you as a client, wrap may be a cost-effective alternative depending on who owns it. And so we established up front that wrap is a valuable commodity, and it depends on is the material available for sale, and in some cases it is, in some cases it's not. If a contractor owns a wrap pile and they're not interested, in selling it for uh, surface treatment use, uh, you know that that material could be quite expensive. Whether it is a cost-effective alternative depends really on the supply and demand dynamics in your in your local market. There, all evidence that we looked at showed that chip seals constructed with wrap require very little alteration. Uh, and perform very comparatively. Not much concern for using wrap in chip seals. It seems to work, and there are a lot of folks, uh, a lot of entities using it and adopting it. We're even hearing of uh, Pennsylvania, New York, uh, communities uh, using wrap in their, their chip seal performance. Wrap in slurry and micro does require uh, a little bit of customization uh, in the emulsion packages, I would encourage you, if you're interested in that, to reach out to Mike Kimsley or some of the other emulsion suppliers that are uh, read in on that subject and can address that. RAP is uh, very rapidly increasing. Recommendations for further research. We really think that there needs to be evaluation of these techniques in other climate zones where uh, it's not as arid, it's not as dry, uh, perhaps in freeze environments. Uh, and we uh, recommend that folks uh, identify how that wrap asphalt and emulsion interaction occurs. Uh, we're learning quite a bit now about how wrap asphalt and uh, virgin asphalt uh, mingle together in uh, hot mix asphalt applications. We need to understand how that happens also in these emulsified products. With that, I will uh, provide you a link here to our YouTube. You can search uh, YouTube for uh, wrap in pavement preservation 
webinar and the, the link should show up. Here's my contact information. I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions that you may have. So thank you again, Scott, for the opportunity to uh, present today and I will turn the presentation over to you. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.